Welcome back to RD Works Learning Lab. We've pretty well covered most of the things that you'll need to use. I've got one or two projects which I'm going to continue with. I'm humming and hiring. Do I make this the last project? Most of the projects that we're going to do now um, are going over quite a lot of old ground, things that we've already covered. But I've found something rather interesting to do today, which is going to examine maybe the way in which uh, paths can be modified or altered. We touched on this handle up here where we were able to look at cut optimize. We might do a little bit more work on that today as part of this exercise. I've got to the point now where basically I'm looking around the internet for 3D model patterns that can be cut on a laser machine. There are very few free patterns out there you might be able to buy some but they're mainly to do with model aircraft or bridges or buildings or Eiffel Tower or things like that. They don't particularly interest me. I'm looking for something a little bit quirky, a little bit different. Well I found something on one of my CAD websites. I don't know what it was designed as. I think it was probably just a standalone model but I've tried to turn it into something a bit more useful. So basically what we're going to do is make a rather beautiful but complex modern table lamp. I have done the design work in my separate CAD system. RD Works, as we've already found out, has got very limited uses. It's a great interface between uh, the machine and a CAD system, but it's not a drawing package in itself. So you're either going to have to do something in your own CAD system or in Coral Draw or some other package before you try and send it into here. So I've already done the work and converted this idea that I've seen into a drawing that I think I can make on the laser machine. So we're going to have a go at it. Right, we're going to import something called that I've called Lamp 1. Let's put it to full size drawing. There we go. You see it takes up quite a lot of the workspace on the table. I happen to have some 4mm clear acrylic that I've designed this for. We've got a series of paths here which we're going to have to cut but you'll notice across the bottom here uh, as I've done the DXF file I've left one vital part out which is the bottom line because if I'm not careful when I bring that in um, it will remain as part of this whole object and I can't work with it separately on a separate layer. So what I'm going to do now is to add a line across the bottom here and you'll notice that if we get to this corner it'll click on the corner and tell us that we've connected with the corner and there we go so we've put the line on and we'll turn that line into blue I believe so can we do that yes we should be able to we click that handles on that and then we turn that line into blue so now we've got two layers on here we've got all these layers and we've got the blue layer now we want to cut the blue layer secondly because we want all these to be cut out first and then separate it out by one final cut. Five I think is probably a little bit on the slow side. Um, I think that we probably should be able to cut probably 10 or 12 millimeters a second because it's only four millimeters thick and if I look back to my test blocks my test blocks tell me that I should easily be able to cut five or even six mil at about 10 millimeters a second so let's jump in at 10 millimeters a second and we'll leave the power at 95 percent we're going to do a cut uh, we're happy with that I don't know that this laser through mode makes any difference but I will tick it and let's have it at 95 percent to match everything else now we check the blue layer and the blue layer it's already set to 10 cut yes 95 95 and we'll have this through power at 95 percent as well i still don't understand what it is but maybe i'll discover what it is one day i didn't know what this green dot was originally but now i do know what that green dot is it is exactly the top left hand corner of the program so if you set your datum if you set your origin to somewhere that will match up with the origin that you set on the machine and that's your machine and your program origin. Your program origin will set with your machine origin. Um, yes, 
Now that all works and it works with the settings that we've got up here on let's just put the handle around here for a moment and we'll look at the handle settings because they do have an effect at the moment we've got these cut op optimize set to we want the order of layer and we've got single inner to outer don't know I didn't know what that meant but I have now discovered what that means and we'll talk about that in a minute. Auto determine start point and direction. OK. It hasn't done anything different. It's still going to go up and down and up and down and up and down these. Um, and then finally it's going to go across the bottom here and cut them all off. Um, I've checked that out with the preview so we won't bother to waste time doing that. OK, so now we need to save that. We need to save this as a drawing file and as an output file for the machine. Um, I think you're well familiar with how to do that now. Now we start off with another clean sheet of paper. I don't know whether it imports as another layer, but it certainly imports it and puts it over the top of the drawing that's already there. So now we're going to import, and we're going to import LAMP2. Now LAMP2 might look the same as LAMP1. It is nearly. It's just that these sizes are different. OK, so now we're going to draw a line across the bottom there, which is our cutoff line. We've made it blue. So we've got a blue layer up there now. We'll go and edit the layer. Is the uh, Yes, what do we have before? We had 10, didn't we? Yes. And the processing mode, cut 95, 95. Laser through mode, 95. OK. And the blue layer should be the same as it was before, 10. 95, 95 and 95. OK. And we should find that our handle up here, let's put the handles around here and then we can go and look at the cut optimize order of layer. So we want the black layer first and then the blue layer. Inside to outside, I'll explain that later. Auto determine start point and direction. OK, we'll leave that to the machine. So now all we need to do is to save it to a drawing file and to an output file. We'll import the final part of the job, which is the base. And we'll make that full size. Right, you'll notice that everything is black. I'd normally put this outside ellipse onto a separate layer so that I've got control of when it gets cut. Because I've imported this file, this outside shape is separate. And when I do this, you'll notice I've only changed the outside shape. I haven't changed the color of the inside elements. And I do get the opportunity to reassign this to a different layer if I want to. But I'm not going to. So what I'm going to do is to put handles around the whole lot with a marquee. And you'll notice everything is now red. And we're going to go up to the handle command and we're going to look at cut optimize. Now in here I've discovered that we've either got order of layer. So if I was to put this outside shape onto a separate layer and make it the lowest one, the second one in the list, then it would cut last. Or what I can do is to say inside to outside. Now what that will do, that means I don't have to assign this to a separate layer. The cutting will start at the center and gradually work its way out. And the last thing that it will do will be the outside shape. So there is an alternative to reassigning elements to layers. When I do that, you'll notice the path has changed. It starts from here. It runs around here. You can follow the path around, across, round, down, across, up here, down here and then it jumps out to the outside and does that last. Okay so you can actually follow the path here without going up to um, the preview but if you want to check exactly what's going on and make sure that your belief is correct you can go and look at it on preview. Save this both to a drawing file and to an output file. See you at the machine. Well as you can see I've got the speed set so that it's a very nice cut on that test square in the corner. 
Um, the problem that I'm finding is that once I start doing a job, the power seems to drop off very quickly. So I've put a temperature control system into my water recirculating system. Currently the water in that tank is 21.6. So we'll see how it changes during the test and whether or not the, um, the laser loses its power again. Well the temperature only went up about 0.8 of a degree during that run. Now let's see whether it's fallen apart. In places it seems to have cut. Let's have a look. Well, yes it has. It's a pretty good start. Just a hint of crispness around the bottom there where maybe it's just about barely making it through the cut. But we can't complain about that, that's good. As you can see we are cutting, we appear to be cutting because we've got smoke underneath the uh, underneath the acrylic. Even though you can see there's plenty of smoke underneath there, I don't think it's cutting properly because there's no indication that these pieces are loose. You know, that's not supported by any pins and I would expect to be able to move that. Now it may be hanging on by a thread, so I can't see any damage to the acrylic underneath, so there's no huge excess of power. My water temperature is up to 24.7, so it hasn't gone up a lot, it's only gone up about 2 degrees during this program. I mean maybe the laser head itself gets hot and isn't adequately cooled by the, uh, by the water flow. Right, we've reset that down to 12 now. The temperature seems to have settled down in the uh, water bath at about 24.4, 24.5, something like that. It's reached a stable position. Well, that's good news. All the pieces are loose. And the cut looks quite good. And I can't really show you what this is until we get to the next part. Well, <clears throat> let's see how this lot goes together. Hopefully that will lean against there, yes, which it does, and there's just a little bit of tension there. These are flexible LED strip lights and I'm now going to stick these around the bottom of the projections that are underneath and uh, we'll see the end result shortly. Well here's the end result. It's a rather nice looking sort of little table lamp display. So that was a fairly successful um, trial for the laser machine with some purpose in mind. We've certainly learnt a lot about the long-term cutting power of the machine. If you're going to use it for any more than maybe half a minute or a minute, then you need to make sure that you downsize the speed because it'll run out of power and you won't cut properly.